Hello friends, the environment is the world around us. It is where we live, where we go to school and work. It is everything we see and everything we touch. Let us see what Ashish and his friend are doing today. If you want to live in a clean and beautiful world, then you have to help take care of it. We all have to share the earth. It's the only one we have. By respecting the area we live in and helping to stop pollution and stop using all of our resources, we can live in a clean and safe environment for us, for our children and for our grandchildren to enjoy. Hold on Ashish, what are you saying? Are you taking part in some debate or something? No, I am not taking part in any debate. I was just rehearsing my speech for the elocution competition on the subject environment. I have read up about a few things in this regard and I feel we all should do our bit for the environment. I still don't understand. What can we do? What is environment actually? I am not sure about that either. Can you tell me? The conditions that surround someone or something. The conditions and influences that affect the growth, health, progress etc. of someone or something is called environment. So our house, our school, our neighborhood and the people, animals and things in it are what form our environment. I understand. But what were you saying about the earth and taking care of it? The living and non-living things present around us forms our natural environment. The trees, the animals, the rocks, rivers etc. are all part of our environment that helps us satisfy our basic needs. I know that food, water and shelter are our basic needs. But how does nature provide us? We get air to breathe from the atmosphere. We get water for drinking and other purposes from rivers, lakes and from under the ground, groundwater. We get food from plants and animals. We also use materials from plants and from the soil for making our houses. We make materials for making our clothes from plants and animals. Fuels from plants and from minerals for example petroleum, coal are obtained from the earth. Metals and plastics from minerals for example iron ore, petroleum are also obtained from the earth. Our life depends on these useful things provided to us by the environment. They are known as natural resources. So a natural resource is something that is found in nature and can be used by people. Earth's natural resources include light, air, water, plants, animals, soil, stone, minerals and fossil fuels. People need some natural resources to stay alive. They use others to make their lives better. Now you have understood it. But why do we need to conserve them? Some of these resources like small plants can be replaced quickly after they are used. Others like large trees take a long time to replace. These are renewable resources. Other resources such as fossil fuels cannot be replaced at all. Once they are used up, they are gone forever. These are non-renewable resources. People often waste natural resources. Animals are overhunted. Forests are cleared, exposing land to wind and water damage. Fertile soil is exhausted and lost to erosion because of poor farming practices. Fuel supplies are depleted. Water and air are polluted. If resources are carelessly managed, many will be used up. If used wisely and efficiently, however, renewable resources will last much longer. Through conservation, people can reduce waste and manage natural resources wisely. But the need to conserve resources often conflicts with other needs. For some people, a wooded area may be a good place to put a farm. A timber company may want to harvest the area's trees for construction materials. A business may want to build a factory or shopping mall on the land. All these needs are valid, but sometimes the plants and animals that live in the area are forgotten. 
the benefits of development need to be weighed against the harm to animals that may be forced to find new habitats, the depletion of resources we may want in the future or damage to resources we use today. Development and conservation can coexist in harmony. When we use the environment in ways that ensure we have resources for the future, it is called sustainable development. There are many different resources we need to conserve in order to live sustainably. So how do we conserve our natural resources? Let us start with air. The conservation of air is the protection and cleaning of the earth's air supply. Air pollution can be caused by many number of sources including transportation, power plants and factories. This pollution can cause a number of health problems, so it is important to practice air conservation when possible. This can be done by reducing emissions produced by personal as well as business activities. Do tell me more. The pollution of air can occur from many number of different sources. The fuel burnt by cars and other modes of transportation is a major source of air pollution. Manufacturing plants and power plants can also be large sources of air pollution, but the amount of pollution may vary depending on the type of factory. Too many greenhouse gases in the air including carbon dioxide and methane have an effect on global warming. Too much ozone can also be a problem because it can cause respiratory problems for some individuals. Other dangerous chemicals such as mercury may escape into the air and cause acid rain. Large amounts of smog can also be unsightly and ruin the aesthetics of many city and natural landscapes. So what can we do? Instead of driving in individual cars, we can carpool or take public transportation whenever possible. Likewise, efforts to conserve electricity used in the home can also help in air conservation, as can the use of renewable energy sources, which are pollution-free, to provide electricity. Is the government involved in any way? Restrictions have been placed on the amount of pollution that some types of large factories can emit. Inspectors are assigned to measure the level of emissions that are produced by certain factories and big businesses to make sure that they are following emissions law that are designed to promote the conservation of air. How to conserve water? Do you remember the water cycle we were taught in school? Yes. Some of the water that falls as rain seeps below the ground. It collects in the soil as groundwater. In many cities and villages, this is the main source of water. People dig wells or install water pumps to get this water. As we use up this water, it gets put back by rain. However, if we use up this water very fast, it cannot be replaced completely by rain. So it goes on reducing. This is what is happening in many cities today. Groundwater is reducing and people have to dig deeper and deeper to get this water. There is already severe water shortage in several cities in India. How should we tackle this problem? First of all, we must reduce wastage of water. For example, never leave tap water running when you brush your teeth. Never use a water pipe to wash your vehicle. Instead, use water taken in a bucket. Be careful not to waste water while watering the plants. That is simple. Next, we should not allow water to get polluted. Sewage and waste water from factories should be treated to clean them before throwing them into rivers or lakes. What is water harvesting? Scientists have developed a simple method of increasing groundwater. It is called rainwater harvesting. The rainwater that falls on the roof of our houses is not allowed to go waste. It is filtered and then sent into a deep hole in the ground. It thus adds to the groundwater. If everyone in a city follows this method, the groundwater problem can be solved. What about soil conservation? In order to conserve the soil, the topmost layers must be preserved. 
it is the ideal layer for the growth of plants. The fertility of the soil must be restored. It occurs by the fixation of nitrogen, green manure, adding the manures and fertilizers, extracting the minerals from decomposed roots and leaves along with the use of animal excreta. The minerals have the ability to pass to the soil via rain. The soil erosion must be prevented. It occurs by the wind and water. The erosion is prevented by the crop rotation, mulching which leads to decrease in the evaporation and increase in the absorption, presence of suitable outlet channels which can carry the water, sowing of certain crops which check the erosion and include the grasses, groundnut, pulses and bursim. The planting of trees also checks the erosion. The control on grazing and the terracing of lands which decrease the speed of water also keeps a check on the erosion. The contour bunding has an ability to hold the rainwater and control erosion. Wow Ashish, you know a lot about conservation. Do tell me more. Forest conservation is the practice of planting and maintaining forested areas for the benefit and sustainability of future generations. Forests are an important natural resource. They provide wood, prevent soil erosion and protect wildlife. Forest conservation involves the upkeep of the natural resources within a forest that are beneficial to both humans and the ecosystem. Nature replaces the trees that die out or are cut down. But we have been cutting trees faster than they can be replaced. To protect forests, we need to cut trees in a planned way. We must plant new trees to replace those that are cut down. Forest conservation acts to maintain, plan and improve forested areas. Forests provide wildlife with a suitable habitat for living along with filtering groundwater and preventing runoff. How do we conserve fuels? The main fuels used by us today are petroleum, coal and natural gas. You have already seen that these are obtained from under the ground. There are limited amounts of these in the earth. They are not being replaced by any natural process. Therefore, they will end in some time. The petroleum deposits in the earth are expected to last only for about 100 years. Coal deposits will last for about 250 years. To conserve these resources, we have to avoid wastage of fuels and energy. Our scientists are also trying to find substitutes for these. For example, they have developed methods of using energy of the sun for cooking food, heating water or for making electricity. They are trying to improve these methods so that we can use them in our daily lives. Now the only resource left is minerals. How do we conserve them? The amounts of minerals in the earth are also limited. They are not being added by any natural process. One method of conserving them is to use them again and again. For example, broken glass bottles and metal cans can be melted and used to make other things. This is called recycling. Even paper which we make from wood can be recycled. This saves more trees from being cut down. How can we recycle paper? You will need some waste paper from an old newspaper or magazine. You will also need a little starch, a bucket, mortar or pestle or anything else to pound the paper and a fine flat wire mesh. I have all of these at home. Ok, then tear the waste paper into small pieces. Take warm water in a bucket and add a little starch to it. Soak the paper in the water for 4 to 5 hours. Take the paper out of the water and pound it with the mortar and pestle till it becomes soft and pulpy. Add more starch to it to thicken it. Spread this pulp on the wire mesh and press it to squeeze the excess water out. Now turn the wire mesh slowly upside down from a smooth surface and put some weight on it. Once it dries up, your handmade paper is ready for use. What can we use this paper for? You will not be able to write on it, but you can draw on it or use it for some other purpose. 
I feel we should adopt some changes in our lifestyle too, so that we cause minimal harm to the nature. Now you got it. To conserve natural resources, we should follow the policy of three R's: reduce, reuse, and recycle in our daily life. In our daily life, reduce the amount of waste. For example, by buying things that do not have a lot of packaging, not buying things unnecessarily, and by not wasting energy. Reuse things instead of throwing them away. For example, reuse paper printed on one side to write. Reuse mineral water bottles to store water. Recycle things that can be used to make new useful objects. Example, by selling old newspapers and broken pieces of glass and metal to a waste collector who will take them for recycling. Come, we must tell all this to other friends as well. So friends remember the living and non-living things present around us forms our natural environment the trees the animals the rocks rivers etc are all part of our environment that helps us satisfy our basic needs the useful things that our environment provides us are known as natural resources some important natural resources are air water soil forests fuels and minerals natural resources are renewable or non renewable in nature our resources are limited and we must conserve them by not wasting and polluting them to conserve natural resources we should follow the policy of 3 r's reduce reuse and recycle in our daily life So till the next lesson comes up take care of yourselves and be good see you soon bye bye